I'd mentioned that I was putting together a, an inexpensive but solidly weatherproof greenhouse. It's coming together. I haven't been doing much in the way of reports on it, but I just did want to focus on a few of the basics that might prove useful to you. Um, typically I get the greenhouse up and then get the plants in the ground, but um, for a variety of reasons I knew the structure was going to come together a little late. Uh, plastic hasn't even arrived yet, should get that in the next couple of days. And every day lost in terms of having these transplants in the ground is very significant at this time of the season. So I wanted to get the plants in as quickly as I could. I, I got them, finally got them in the ground. Uh, this morning and I'm moving forward now to finishing off the structure itself. It's very simple. We've got half inch rebar. You can see it here assembled in a basic sort of Quonset hut shape. It's important to make sure especially that these um, uh, hoops, these uh, arcs, um, stand uh, directly upright. We don't want any lean in those. And one of the things the purlin does, this is this piece running down the middle of the top of the greenhouse, is help keep that integrity in place in terms of angles. We want everything nice and vertical and so on and so forth. It also provides us with the uh, support points under which I'll place T-posts, if snow threatens, steep T-posts are these long, very solid pieces of metal that will ensure that um, uh, the greenhouse won't sink at these points. And then that still means that we have to potentially deal with the weight of snow on the side of the greenhouse, which can push these pieces of rebar into the ground. So one of the ways we deal with that is by securing them with um, plumber's tape to the boards that run down the sides of the greenhouse. And um, we get a little bit of extra support and integrity lent by the um, fencing wire that we basically uh, put along the sides of the greenhouse. These are um, come from um, six foot by 50 foot rolls of fencing wire and I space the hoops uh, of rebar to reflect the um, length or I should say the width of the fencing wire and a sweet little trick here at the end of the uh, uh, greenhouse itself is instead of uh, pulling the end of the wire up to the edge uh, the final edge of rebar and then attaching it with wire what I do is instead is take the final strand off the side of the fencing wire and that basically allows me to use the, um, the fencing wire itself to secure it to the uh, uh, final piece of rebar. It also provides a nice, not, not just a very solid and secure connection, but it's rounded so won't tear plastic, which is something that we really want to avoid with these somewhat funky approaches using these uh, somewhat unorthodox methodologies. The uh, uh, most awkward part of often putting these greenhouses together is what to do with the plastic at the very ends. That's something I'll address in my next video, hopefully. Uh, how do we secure the plastic to the both ends of the greenhouse and then what do we actually do in terms of providing a door or otherwise that keeps um, the weather out when that needs to happen.